Awesome. Well, I think it's a good time to get started. So thank you to everyone who's here and thank you to the team for coming along this. We're going to start with the questions in the AMA channel and then we'll open it up to anyone that wants to ask a question. You can either put your hand up. If you don't want to, you can type it out in the AMA uh, channel and we'll answer. With us, we've got Jordan and James, our two co-founders, Fraser, Full Stack Dev, and George, our COO. How is everyone doing? Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, doing great, Sam. Thanks. Doing well, thank great you. Lovely sunny day. So, you love to see it. Love it. Yeah, all good here. Awesome. Well, let's get started. So, the first question in the channel is from Trippin B. Can you please set up the assistant manager mode ASAP so owners of multiple clubs can farm them out to scholars? I'll pass this over to you, Fraser. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for the question. That's definitely like a legitimate use case for managers. I think that's kind of what we're envisioning with this scholarship pro program is like somebody who maybe has a lot of money, but not a lot of time can kind of delegate that to an assistant manager. So I think like probably the main reason that we haven't tackled this yet is just priorities, right? Like that's what a lot of game development is, is just having different priorities. Like we have a schedule of things that we want to get done, get feedback on early. And it just happens that maybe assistant managers is a bit closer to lunch rather than right now. Uh, but the other reason is that we like really want to think this through and do it properly. So we don't want a system where like the owner of the club delegates control to assistant manager and the assistant manager just has complete control over the club. Like they can sell all the players, like liquidate the club treasury, lose a bunch of matches and just like be able to do whatever. We want it to be kind of granular. So maybe like you have different assistant managers and they each have like a small transfer budget so that they can quickly grab a player off the transfer market before it gets sold to someone else. Or they can control the tactics, but they maybe can't control the like actual like, lineup, like the players in the squad, they can only choose their positions. They can't actually like change which players are in the team, that sort of thing. Uh, so that, that, that's the main reasons. Um, but obviously, we're happy for feedback with that, and uh, would be interested to see what you guys, how you guys think that feature should be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's like an interesting question. Like, what we want to be able to do is kind of have these kind of points where people can negotiate these interesting contracts between this manager and this owner, and kind of like execute on this successfully. Then it's as Fraser mentioned, it's quite like a multi-dimensional thing and we won't want to end up like I said not giving enough constraints and kind of letting managers go rogue or having situations where managers actually don't have any kind of meaningful autonomy and thanks yeah awesome and uh, we did release our product feature roadmap yesterday which did did involve that and the next question is from Gosta. Is is the Footium token still set to be released alongside the game's launch? And I'm going to pass this one back to you, James. Cool. So, I think because there are different kind of aspects of the game that will kind of like will be using the token. So it's going to be important. There's going to be like a very tight relationship between the game being released and the token also being released. So kind of the the, the answer there is they're going to they're kind of come at similar times. Awesome. So the next question is about the match engine. So that is from Royal Livy. How far along in the development is the 2D match engine at the moment? And this makes perfect sense to go to you, Jordan. Cheers. Um, yes, in terms of the 2D match simulation, um, so this is something that we have been looking at um, relatively recently. Um, so for those that have played the beta, they'll have had experience with the current match simulation. Um, you'll have seen the sort of limitations that it has and what it does bring to the game. Um, so you'll have seen the feature roadmap. Um, and yeah, starting from this week, um, so the development team, our focus has been on um, redesigning the match engine um, and adding more complexity. Um, we want to simulate every single event within the game. Um, so whether that's a, you know, like a pass, ball receipt, carry, dribble, through ball, cross, um, and so on. We want to simulate everything within the game. Um, however, when that is finished, um, and we've got you know we've got timelines on this. Um, this won't be ready for phase three, um, but we will be 
they were thinking hopefully the, the phase after that's when we want to get this to the community start getting feedback from you guys on it um but yeah this isn't the 2d match simulation um it's an event based for now um but we will be iterating upon that we will be adding more complexity as it goes forward um but yeah as a starting base um starting with going back to the drawing board thinking about the whole match simulation um and making it event based and very much granularly we want to simulate every event within the within the match itself so so with that jordan i've actually got a supplementary question yeah, are you talking red cards and everything like someone could get sent off for punching someone like proper violent conduct and all that yeah we, <laughs> it's funny yeah we've actually got an event for that um oh yes, really yeah, so we added. Uh, we've got bad behaviour in there. Um, so yeah, people can yeah people can get sent off for red cards or sorry, sent off for punching someone or something like that. Um, so that's that's very much on very much um, on the roadmap for this next version of the actual match engine itself. Yeah. Ron Foreman strikes me as someone who'll get a couple of red cards in his career. I think he will, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Not Joey Green, Green though. He's like he's he's perfect. He's he's going to go through his whole career without a single yellow card. Yeah, like Gary Lineker. <laughs> Joey Green is the Gary, Gary Lineker. Lineker him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next question is from Dow Chemist: Is the team thinking of ways to promote the game via esports, making the match Twitch friendly, or something along those lines? So yeah, that's something that we've actually been thinking about recently. Um, we've been strategizing on how an esports league could potentially work. We've been having ideas that it could maybe be a league that's separate to Footium and everyone has a set budget and there's like a tournament over a week where everyone competes against each other. We thought that might be a cool way for potentially football clubs and organizations and people to get involved in that sort of thing. And the match, over what, like the Footium game will be Twitch friendly 100%. I think a lot of you have probably seen Moza's streams already and with the new ui there'll be a lot more um possibility for more streams and exciting streams so yeah esports is definitely something we're thinking about and 100 percent twitch friendly so will there be any safeguard for players that own higher league and lower league clubs simultaneously to avoid using the better players of the higher division in the lower if by day five they notice the higher div club is not that competitive did you get that george uh, I think so. <laughs> Let me just reread it. <laughs> that is uh, it's quite a long one. Okay. Yeah, I think I've got it. So the the worry is that say if you have a I say a div three club, first five games in the season, you've lost four or five of them. Realize that you're getting relegated this season, so you send all your best players down to your like div six club so that they can get promoted. Um, yeah, I, it's kind of hard to prevent that because there's not really a a way we could stop that what we can do is disincentivize it through uh, which is going to be in the game anyway uh, for people kind of moving down divisions and, and even just transferring teams a small morale drop but if you're dropping from like division three down to division six we can implement a perhaps a bigger morale drop for that especially um but at the end of the day kind of moving those players from your best club to like a worse one is going to devalue one club and empower another and you could do the opposite way like sending the best players from your div six club up to your Div four club or something. Um, either way, the it's not the value is not really changing. It's just moving between clubs. Um, I guess that they can have different amounts of value in different leagues, but you're basically after those five games resigning to to kind of uh, relegation, um, which in my opinion you should never do. But it's obviously up to you what, what you want to do that on that front. But yeah, maybe there was a chance you could have got out of out of the relegation zone, so you've just given up that chance entirely. So it's um, it's hard to prevent. We can put some things in place for that. Uh, to kind of discourage it but at the end of the day i think the the value is moving rather than being created yeah i guess like one of the concerns is that if you're now being faced with a type of opponent you didn't really expect to face and assuming that that kind of these guys who have going to put their kind of star players in a lower team low division club assuming it's a successful strategy and they do kind of get promoted then they would kind of like self-select out of being one of your competitors so you probably won't have to face them in the future and so it seems like this type of concern would only really exist for a single season, assuming it was like successful. So I don't think it would be like a, a consistent problem. As George mentioned, like you are also necessarily trading off against 
your other clubs things. It's kind of like for you as a club owner, like whether you interpret it as like zero sum or positive sum, then it's like not clear cut that it's kind of damages kind of the or can go against too much against the game. Yeah, and so the next question is actually quite similar. It's will there will anything be in place to prevent blatant match fixing? Will Footyum have the power to review and rule on games that have been purposely thrown? That brown envelope stuff. <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, the Bradley Wood Lincoln Day Sam. Oh yeah, um, He's betting on himself. Dodgy to get card. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, match fixing. It's in. It's similar to the last one, I guess, where it's it's really hard to judge, right? So say it comes to the end of the season, <clears throat> their opponent is like mid table, so they put on loads of youth yeah. players to give them a run out to try and get them kind of improving their ratings. Because obviously, more minutes on the pitch means a higher increase in in ratings. Is that purposely match throwing, or are they just giving their youth players a run out? Um, it's so it's very hard to to kind of do anything on that. Um, I guess if there was literally a, an on chain transaction, they sent some money to them before the game, <laughs> you could maybe have a look at that. But realistically, it's it's so hard to judge that um, the best way to deal with that is rather than trying to punish those that may do it, it's just incentivizing, creating an incentive for people to win as many games as possible. Um, so yeah, I think there were some good ideas and feedback on the prize pools article where a few people suggested having um, kind of a small amount of prize for winning each game rather than just the the big prize at the end of the season, uh, which is something we've been been looking into. And I think it is definitely solves some of the problems like this. And maybe I mean this problem still exists because likely the the bribe they would give for the match fixing would would probably be higher than the amount someone could uh, expect from winning a game. Um, but yeah, I guess the the best approach is is to try and incentivize people to win. Um, I'm not going to set up a, <laughs> a whole footy in court to try and arbitrate these issues, um, unless anyone has any amazing di- ideas as to how we can do that. We'd be happy to hear. Yeah, that'd be interesting actually. But the next one, I I have a, I want Jordan to answer this because I'd be absolutely fuming if that's, this happened to me. But what are there injuries within the game? I think if if my star player got injured. Oh, I'd be fuming. <laughs> um, yeah, so like the current plan is, yes, there are injuries in the game. Um, I think we do have to be careful, though, because, um, I mean, you, you don't want ludicrous injuries where someone breaks the leg and is out for like a season or two. Um, so, yes, yeah, there will be injuries. Um, and, yeah, uh, we do have to balance that. We do have to think um, and we do have to test as well. Um, whether we want to have like stupidly ludicrous injuries which might end a player's career. Um, but yeah, really interested to hear from the community as well what their thoughts are on that. Um, but as well, each player will have um, a hidden attribute, an injury proneness, and yeah, that will determine how many of these sort of little niggly injuries they're going to get and might be out for a, a few weeks a few or a match. Um, quite regularly and that's something you learn as you play the game and of course that's going to affect the player's value as well and and so on so yeah yeah that's fair the next question is which chain will be next which i'll pass over to you fraser nice thank you sam um yeah so this is a good, a good question um we've also considered quite a few chains like i know everyone kind of has like their favorite chain that they want us to use um there's, there's a few like concerns I just want to bring up to like kind of in case people didn't know these things. Uh, so there's like this concept of EVM chains versus non EVM chains. So it's like stuff that's based on Ethereum and stuff that isn't based on Ethereum. So like the Ethereum ones would be like Polygon, Immutable X, like Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain is literally a clone of Ethereum, actually. Um, and then there's the non EVM chains like Solana and Algorand. So just like for us on a technical level, it's much easier to use the more Ethereum based chains. So that'll probably be probably be one of those that's first. Um, and it's also easier for users because they can use MetaMask and they have like the same Ethereum address across all these chains. So those are the considerations that go into it. Uh, and there's also these ideas too of like why we even want to launch on a different chain. Is it to have like lower gas costs? Is it to attract a different audience? Because there's also the concern that if you launch on every chain, then everyone's like playing on a different chain and then there's like one player per chain. And the game is just really boring because there's no one to play with on your chosen chain. So yeah, there's a ton of a ton of considerations, but basically to cut to the chase, we're obviously considering like the, the big L2s, um, Polygon, newer ones like Arbitrum, 
Immutable X. Uh, yeah, it's there's a lot of things that go into that. I don't know, maybe any of you guys have, like, I don't know if some of the team has a particular one they want to mention, but those are the main ones. No, yeah, I guess that that pretty much um, covers it. I think it's the main focus is getting the the main game out there on L two, and then we'll look at should we and we'll, and like which should we launch on if we had to launch on another chain at that point. But it's obviously still quite a, a ways off, so haven't put too much thought into that yet. Awesome. Yeah, I think the next question will have a lot of people wanting to know the answer. Are there plans to make more custom logos? I'm 100% sure more people would buy clubs if they have a nicer logo in the lower leagues. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's lots of different ways we can do this. Um, and there's lots of um, scenarios that we've thought out. I mean, w one of the ways is like improving quality of each component within um you know within within the badge themselves and then updating everybody's badge all at once and all of a sudden you have like a you know higher quality um a higher quality club badge um but at the same time like people like we've got really attached to our, our clubs and our club badges and i know um like high talk albion I, I i do you know you, you do get attached to these um but at the same time we can also tie this in with the gamification effect as well um, and one of the ideas that we've got at the moment is, you know, instead of like just updating everybody's badges all at once, um, that that could potentially be complicated in other sort of ways. Um, but we've thought about, um, the current idea is to have them for potentially like rewards for winning divisions, getting promoted to maybe like division five, or division four, or winning cup competitions, um, and having certain levels of rewards as well based upon that. So. Maybe it is like just a component upgrade, um, or maybe it is like an actually an actual bespoke badge, um, like custom designed by by one of our artists, and that's something that could happen, right? It, maybe the bespoke badges are reserved for the top leagues. Maybe that's reserved for Division Three, Two, and One, um, and then the upgraded badges maybe just reserved for Division Five and Four. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely the idea at the moment, and we absolutely hundred percent do want to upgrade um the current badges and improve the quality of them yeah i think that would be really cool if you get promoted to a certain league um our designer that did all of the bespoke badges could design a badge for navia really cool cool way to do it cup, cup wins or getting to the final or something like that um but yeah i think the bespoke badges do look do look super cool so giving people the the chance to upgrade that if they do achieve something with their club uh, would be would be awesome the next one was was scout is will scouting be a thing and will there be an official loan system give this to you jordan yeah um so no yeah no plans for scouting at the moment um but loans definitely yeah um it, yeah certainly an interesting problem uh, i don't know if you can if you want to add some more detail on that fraser um yeah sure yeah loaning is quite a fun one uh like i think Loaning particularly kind of shows the power of using the blockchain and the smart contracts. It's like me just kind of nerding out, but basically it means that we can create a custom NFT that has, that has this special rule, which is basically like if there's a loan and the loan has been exceeded, then the owner can like forcibly take the NFT back from the person who's like borrowing the NFT. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but yeah, that's the idea is that you can basically set up this like official loaning system that's completely unbreakable and there's like no way to cheat it or steal the nft from the person that's loaning it to you um, but i think another reason that loaning is kind of further away is again kind of like the assistant manager stuff really we want to think it through and how the mechanics should work and like we were talking about this in the team the other day there's all these like weird concerns of if you loan out a player to someone else and then that team like wins a prize do the winners get the prize like does the person who originally owned the player gets some of the prize like what happens if the player gets injured what if i loan a player out and then that person like forcibly injures my player is is that like my fault is it their fault you can imagine doing harm to the player that you've like borrowed you can imagine yeah. people kicking off in discord <laughs> <laughs> purposely injuring a loan player that is not something i would have thought of exactly yeah yeah it's a very adversarial a contract properly you should be able to run down your loan player <laughs> like, recall clause just... <laughs> recall. and the injuries yeah it's not a recall clause actually it's too late at that point isn't it yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I guess it's also like the two approaches about like like lending it like, to yourself, like it's like how do you structure that or versus can you just like lend the functionality within the game itself and there's some different design decisions to be made to be made there. Yeah, I think naturally the way to do it would be loan not actually moving the NFT, but having it locked up whilst it's a bit mm. on the game engine side, the player yeah. goes to the, the club that's loaned them. And then just when it's yeah. released, it's released from the, the lockup. Yeah, like NFT collateralization and lending is not super developed as a, as a concept yet. Yeah, so we do we do have a question from Spud actually. Anyway, he said, "Will there be a limit to the number of legendary players allowed per team in order to prevent a possible meta where a couple of players control all of the supply?" Which I'll give this to you, George. Thank you very much. Um, so. Yeah, I think this would be hard to, it'd be hard to stop certain people, let's say, or let's say a wallet owning a large percentage of the legendary player supply, um, just because even if it wasn't in their squad, they could withdraw it from the game to their MetaMask wallet, which we obviously can't control, or they could just buy up like a Division 8 team and put all the legendary players in there and uh, etc. So in terms of them owning the supply, it's quite hard to stop. Um and even if you I mean, ban them from auctions, they could just buy them in the secondary market. Um, however, I, if we and this isn't something we've we've fully discussed yet, but I think the solution to this, if we decided to go this route, would be to limit how many you can field in each lineup. Um, so maybe you can only play a couple at once, or have a f x many in your match day squad. Um, so even if you own ten, you can only actually utilize three in each lineup, or four in a squad, or something like that. Um, if this kind of became a problem, but I think this is maybe something that we would um, just off instinct allow kind of at launch without this restriction in place. And then if it did become a problem, we could perhaps introduce some kind of limitation in there. But I'm aware of kind of the what's happened with Sora, unique cards and people earning huge amounts of the supply. Um, so I understand why this, this is definitely a, a concern. Uh, so something we'll definitely keep an eye on. Um, and maybe if a large part of the community think we should definitely cap this at least how many can have in a match day squad, we would uh, do that. Cool. Uh, Spud said, I noticed on the most recent roadmap, all of the player pitches are in the new style looking to the left. Is this a replacement for the old style or will both exist in the game? So it's on about like new player designs for the cards. Oh, oh sure. Yeah, so like something that Rick is thinking about is like, particularly these kinds of the randomly generated players, then they are super... They're very, they're very stylistic, very fun, uh, but they do look. But some of them do look kind of weird. <laughs> like we do love Ron Foreman sideburns, and like and mustaches. Maybe not and eighteen really, though. Maybe maybe, so maybe not eighteen. <laughs> and what we're thinking about doing is having some kind of new designs commissioned, whilst like retaining like the stylistic feel of Thutium, and kind of what makes what gives it kind of the Thutium feel, which I think. A lot of the value of what the current play designs are like, whilst kind of potentially increasing some of the realism and having to kind of make sure kind of the components fit together more sensically. Any of the guys got a, any comments? No, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, mainly it's the the direction of facing at the moment is if it's a legendary player it faces off to the side and a, a normal player faces kind of straight on. Um, but as James mentioned, we're we're looking at reworking them them slightly. Yeah, I'd love to get some more feedback on on player designs and legendary designs. To be fair, because I know it's quite contrasting what people think. I know <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's no clear consensus. <laughs> I know we've had like good feedback on the legendary players, but I think the normal ones, it's it's very split. Yeah, like legendary players are like really cool bespoke pieces of art, and because some of these can we have like I say, they've normally the randomly generated players like conform to similar style, but then kind of the art kind of doesn't scale super well into kind of these randomly generated components, although yeah, there is no not a clear consensus on, on how these are perceived. Yeah, exactly. So um Jaden Bencho, what a weird name, asked, There's been a lot of new <laughs> signings for the Footium team recently. Are there any more in the pipeline? Pass to you, George. Yeah, so it's been exciting to, to onboard a few more, more team members over the last few weeks. Um, something that I work on quite 
uh, frequently day to day is um, kind of building out the team so that we can get to the, the kind of capacity for development that we want in terms of the marketing side as well. Um, so yeah, been some some good signings recently uh, going into the summer transfer window. So there'll definitely be a, a few more that we've got in the pipeline at the moment, uh, just trying to get uh, signatures on dotted lines. So yeah, keep your eyes out for some some exciting announcements. Exciting. Um, with condition loss from matches and training sessions, will players generate fitness percentage every set amount of hours so we can work out how much to train and still be ready for a match? I give this to you, Jordan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what that's in the the game at the moment. It's just about releasing the formulas and making it more user friendly on the front end. Um, yeah, fitness does recover um, a unit time. So hundred percent. Yeah, that 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 will go out. Awesome. Uh, the next question: With other NFT football management games starting to gain some traction, how will the team ensure that the delay in game launch? will not allow competitors to eat into Footium's loyal fan base. More community engagement, marketing, etc. Give this to you, George. Oh, um, I would say, yeah, I think the space is like, there's a lot of companies in just generally in the sort of football and web free space. Um, and obviously a few of uh, NFC football management games as well. Um, so yeah, I think our goal really is that as a team, especially with the kind of announcement on the, the slight delay is that we kind of originally thought we could launch a kind of good game that we would continue adding to um, and could then make kind of turn it into a great game alongside that. But from kind of, especially when planning that all out, there is a few things, especially that you don't really want to change post launch. Um, so things such as kind of player attributes, uh, probably formations and player ratings. So we wouldn't want to kind of launch the game and people go out and buy all these cards and form their team. And then we make this major change to the game engine or to formations or player ratings. And then like, I don't know, right backs become really undervalued in comparison to right wing backs. So I think that was is the situation we'd really like to avoid as well as launching a game at launch that is is already really good and then continuing to add to that. So I think that's kind of the reasoning really behind the the delay in the game launch is a kind of change in in mindset on our side as well as um wanting to ensure that we do launch with a, a kind of really good game at the start um so we don't have those issues in kind of value changes post there will still obviously still be some changes and and balancing as as the game progresses but hopefully nothing uh, super major uh, in terms of community engagement marketing i think sam's definitely got some good ideas uh, for upcoming things that we can can get people involved with i know everyone likes the the quizzes but uh, a few of our ideas about sort of Discord engagement as well as Twitter. And then marketing side, yeah, this is something we are um, kind of putting a lot of effort into at the moment as well as partnerships. Um, so we do actually have something very exciting to hopefully announce. I don't know when, uh, maybe in about a month or so, um, but it just got over the line today. So um, yeah, it will be, I don't know how much I can say on this actually, but. Uh, <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting and it should be a lot of, uh, we can get a lot of community engagement in, involved as well, uh, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I can say, so I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, sounds good, but I'm excited. Cool. So the next question is, is there any system in place to stop people sending full squads between divisions from match to match with kickoff times desynced over overtime zones or for cup games, etc.? Which I'll give to you, John. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the main idea is like we want to include some sort of tax within the game engine itself. Um, so any like major shifts um, in like the team and transferring a large number of players um, is going to result in like a huge morale drop. Um, you can't just replace um, one team with another and expect them to play um, co coherently with, with them or, you know, under another badge, another name. Um, yeah. That's that's pretty much it. I think it's um it's it's going to be about testing. It's going to be about um add, adding those features into the game engine to prevent to prevent that from happening. You can't just move a large number of players and um in a full squad and so on. Cool. That sounds good. So the next one we've got eight eight quick fire questions. So George, are you are you ready to do some quick oh, fire questions with me? <laughs> yeah let's go for it 
Okay, so the first one. Will we be able to know if another <coughs> manager is online or the team is being auto-managed? I guess it's quite hard to do. So you'd be able to see if they're making changes, but I guess most people wouldn't make changes to the second half. Um, you could probably see if they're being auto-managed if the formation's been the same across the last few games, because I think that's generally how the auto-management would work. But maybe what we could add is uh, an option where if you're watching the game, you can sign a transaction, which kind of shows that you're online. Um I don't know. Do you think that would be possible, Fraser or Jordan? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't see why not. That would totally be possible. Um, and obviously, I think you'd, you'd be able to, I guess, like check the blockchain to see if they've been doing stuff. Or yeah, we could keep a record of like whether somebody actually chose that formation or it was just auto picked by our like auto picking algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. To, to be fair, I just wouldn't sign it, so I'd get in the other manager's head though. <laughs> you can play some proper mind games with that. So the next one, <laughs> will we be able to know how many people are watching my match live? Um, Probably not, no. When will we have player match rating at full time slash sinks during the match? Um, I think this refers to like giving them a 1 to 10 oh, okay, rating, yeah. like the form performance in the match. So yeah, that's definitely on the uh, on the feature list. So... Yeah, I, I guess it would just update during the match as they kind of make successful or unsuccessful actions. Like if they uh, misplace a pass, it would drop down, um, similar to real life football, really. So, yeah, that should definitely be in before launch. Will expanding stadium be done through rewards or money? Uh, the current idea is that it would be through both. So maybe some of the, the prizes included in sort of promotion or, or finishing well in the league would be either straight up stadium rewards or opportunities to expand stadiums etc um or you can kind of there'll be certain upgrades you can buy but we probably we're going to probably try and limit it so you can't just upgrade an eighty thousand seater stadium in division eight um because <laughs> that would be a bit unrealistic but as you progress up the divisions or hit certain achievements you would be able to upgrade more um either through money or for, for winning those rewards always everyone always goes on about that hot dog stand you'll be able to get that hot dog stand at some point <laughs> will there be a limit of transfers between clubs owned um i don't know what that means um, i guess it's like if you own multiple clubs and you're transferring uh players between them i guess it's quite hard to enforce um you could just move it to a different metamask and then it would like you would know who owns it yeah will high higher club division players have a superior rating over lower clubs by definition uh yeah so the spawn squads the um like the higher division the higher the quality of the players and similar with the academies at the start with the academies there are ways you can kind of improve them though so you could have scenarios where a division eight academy is producing better players than a division six academy because they've put a lot of resources into it got really great coaches etc um but on average it would be yeah in order of division can you elaborate elaborate on the rewards per win mentioned yesterday in the feature roadmap? Yeah, I guess it's it's something we we got a lot of good feedback on when we put the price plus article out. So it's something we're looking at. It's just hard to know how many re how much rewards we can give out because obviously the original idea was the prize pools would accumulate during a season and then distributed at the end. Um, whereas with this, we'd have to I guess preempt the level of rewards and then what split of that should go to get into the kind of prize pool for match wins and which should still be left for the end of the season so it's something we're definitely thinking of and i think probably will be in the game but it's just making sure that the parameters of that are right cool and your final one is are you planning to introduce crowns crowd sound effects to the game definitely we want a, a big golasso um yeah, when you score so maybe we can have like customized as well as so you can choose what sound plays for your opponent i'm sure there'll be a meta for like which one's the most annoying <laughs> yeah that happened that for you. in the background <laughs> that's a bit PG though. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> awesome. So the next one is: Will there be a maximum amount of players per club? Um, this is either you or Fraser or Jordan, really. Um, yeah, on the squad. So the squads for the team, there will be a maximum number of players. However, again, it's like I suppose this question is about like how do you prevent clubs from accumulating too many players and I suppose owners can always transfer players out of that club and then back in but yeah like adding the morale the morale drop um, should solve that problem um, yeah reasonably well 
Yeah, cool. So we're gonna we've got about five more minutes left. So if anyone in the audience does want to put their hand up and ask ask a question, you're more than welcome to. But if not, we'll just continue going through a couple of these. Um, how will how will the team ensure the match engine is balanced and certain stats aren't overpowered? I'll give this back to you again, John. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is something we've been doing quite a lot of recently. Obviously, with the recent feedback from the beta, um, it's it's about testing. Um, lots of automated simulations on our side. Um, lots of setting up of different scenarios. Um, and yeah, every time like we see something in the beta. Um, some sort of strange behavior, you know, as we go forward in increasing the complexity of the match engine and stuff like that. Um, when we do see strange behavior, locking that down with more tests, automated tests on our side. Um, yeah, that's something how we've how we've tried to improve the, the player stats as well um, recently uh, and the generation of player stats. Again, it's all about testing um, and locking it down with automated tests. Is a way forward, and the feedback into that comes from what we what we see in the beta. Yeah, and to kind of go on from there, can please provide information on how being actively online versus passively setting up a team in advance will change results and change the experience of a team. I can take this one. I guess I, I guess it depends on how how good a manager you are. Um, is one aspect, but. As mentioned, I think it was in the feedbacks channel a couple of weeks ago, um, some people suggested being able to kind of preset tactical changes before a match. So if at 60 minutes you're losing, it switches to attacking or switches to this formation or subs this person on. Um, just something I think would definitely be a good feature to have in the game for those people that aren't able to uh, kind of play every, live every every week, uh, every day, sorry. Um, but yeah, for those that do want to, that kind of want to watch the match play out, uh, try and analyze, is it the formation that's uh, kind of not working? Is it the play style? Should we switch to pressing or long ball? Um, similar to, to what you would do in Football Manager, uh, being online would be helpful. But again, it's how good are you actually as a manager to spot that? I think there's some obvious ones, which is, OK, you're losing, so stick on more attackers um, or go to attacking. But then the more complex stuff is probably helpful to to be present, but it doesn't mean it that you will have a positive effect on the team, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I think we got um, the question that was meant to be asked on voice, but uh, bottled it. So <laughs> from Questo, um, would a free-to-play version be an option to onboard more users due to limit on clubs? Um, yeah, effectively, that's something we plan to do. I think it would probably be post-launch, but an idea, it's, it's a great way to expand the community, the user base, and then it kind of encourages people to, to get used to playing the game and they can then, um, if they want to, go and, and buy up a, a proper club. So it probably wouldn't be NFTs. Uh, only problem is ensuring how trading would work in that, but you can definitely do the formations, uh, bring players through the academy, et cetera. Uh, similar to what SoRed does with the, I mean, it's the common players that you start off with, you can play it for a few weeks. Uh, there is also a small prize, and we could probably do similar if we can get that league or division sponsored. Uh, have a actually still have a prize for some winners, and then um, yeah, great way to expand the, the user base. Um, second one, footing could allow X amount to mint their clubs each season to become non-league users. Ensuring supply and demand is still kept tight on minted clubs, but keeps current non-club owners and get. I guess yeah, it follows on from that point. Um, I think it, obviously in future the supply will increase. It's just at which point. That happens is it through expanding to another chain is it adding a division nine um i think we're not quite at that point yet so um but obviously when we are you'll definitely hear about it awesome i'll just do a couple more how do you envision social media such as footy and twitter accounts to be utilized in the future can teams gain sponsorships that would increase their budgets this person would personally prefer not to unbalance budgets between teams in a division so I think for me personally, I love, I know everyone in the team loves all of the social media accounts um, for the footy and clubs. It's amazing to me, especially Newsby Birch and all of the 15 accounts he has for everything. <laughs> and it's and we want to like make sure people can do the most with their social media accounts and footy. And, and I think adding little features to the club page, like a link to your Twitter and a link to your Discord, which can help for trades and things like that will be really cool. And in the future, export features on the club page where you submit your lineup and you can export it and put it onto Twitter in the easiest way possible. 
But regarding the sponsorship thing, I think I'm I'm not too sure on this. So, George, you can add a little bit more. But for me, I think it's more so far. It's been people getting sponsorships on their own accord, and there's not there's not exactly a way to do it in the game. I don't know if we have plans for there to be a, a way to do it in the game in the future. Yeah, I think it's something we we'd love to see, and it's obviously a thing that resembles real world football, and we've seen it a couple of times already, and hopefully uh, even more so moving forwards. But yeah, it's something we we want to allow people to maybe they can change their advertising hoardings around the edge of their stadium or have an act, imprint an actual logo onto their kit. So if you did kind of line yourself up a little sponsorship deal with a company and uh, got some money for that, you could then put their branding into the game. Obviously, there'd have to be some kind of <laughs> review process for that because um, you don't want any IP infringement and also like naughty stuff. So um, yeah, that's naughty something stuff. that's to be fleshed out. Naughty stuff. <laughs> what was it Jordan said earlier? <laughs> Bad actions, <laughs> naughty actions. Um, I thought PG, PG. behaviour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we would, yeah, we'd need to to think on that, um, and maybe that's where something like the FFL could could weigh in. But yeah, it's definitely something we'd we'd love to see people going out and getting more sponsorship deals for their clubs, um, and and maybe getting some funds to invest into legendary players through that. Awesome. So we'll just finish off with instead of a prize pool for each game, is there an incentive for perhaps adding prize pools for player of the season golden boot golden glove etc like end of season awards um i think we could definitely do sort of nft awards and trophies for for things like that as for kind of monetary prizes maybe in future but probably not at the start i want to make sure that the, the general prize pool mechanisms are are on point before we start expanding that um i just wanted to maybe sammy could answer uh, i don't know if it's jonesy or jonesy 2k um question about the next phase of the beta will it be uh, more influencers or current football players or new beta testers uh, being just the community members yeah that. so phase three is it's mainly community members there'll be a couple of footballers nigel and sean right phillips they will both be playing we spoke to sean the other day and he's he's a big gamer he's super excited about playing he, he even offered to play pro clubs with us so maybe we'll, oh, set yeah, up, maybe we'll set up a little pro club, a footy and pro clubs, and we can get some community members on to play um, pro clubs with us and Sean Wright Phillips. But yeah, the bulk of this phase is community and obviously looking to expand in the future. It'll be more community, which I'm really excited to see all of the banter on Twitter and Discord. I know Jonesy, the one that asked the question, has been at Questo nonstop since, since he's been told. So I'm looking forward to seeing it when it all kicks off. Awesome. I think that... Oh, yeah, just going back to your point as well, George, I think something that would be cool is which would make it hard to have money um, prizes for, like, player of the season, like, vote voted player of the season would be really cool as well. Oh, yeah, you could... Yeah, player's and, player. Yeah, and the... Do, like, top scorer, like, golden boot. But yeah. yeah, that is true, to be fair. And your presentations mm-hmm. in the Metaverse Studios. Oh, yeah. End of season awards. That would be awesome. <laughs> awesome. I think, well, what are you saying, Rosa? Oh no, definitely need one for like the best looking player. You know, I think like Ron Foreman <laughs> would looking that. Player. <laughs> Maybe this is why we work. shouldn't include Ron Foreman. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, if we missed any of your questions, just feel free to ping them again and we'll we'll try and answer them. But thank you everyone for coming. Thank you team for answering all the questions and we'll upload the highlights onto our YouTube. Cheers everyone. Thank you. Everyone, yeah, much appreciate the questions. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.